What's up guys, my name is Alan and first of all welcome to today's Wix SEO video. In today's video I'm going to teach you how to set up your basic SEO and also help you set up your advanced SEO within Wix. And if at any point you need help, you can consider reaching out for me, I am available for hire on the Wix.com marketplace. Let's go ahead and get started. You first obviously need a Wix.com website, so make sure you go to your Wix dashboard, make sure you hover over the top right hand corner and click on edit site. From here, you'll have access to your Wix editor. This is the main area that we're going to be working in to edit our basic SEO and our advanced SEO. Now let's go ahead and look at the premise of this project. This business is called Seaside BNB. They're a hotel out in Turks and Caicos. So let's go ahead and see how we can help this business rank better on Google search. First thing we need to do is click on the top left hand corner, pages and menus. From here, let's hover over our homepage, click on the three little dots, and click on SEO basics. From here, you'll be introduced to the basic SEO settings. So you can already tell that there's an issue with this website. This website isn't going to rank high on Google search. Because, first of all, the only thing that they're telling Google is that they're Seaside BNB. We know that they're a hotel company out in Turks and Caicos that offers affordable rooms, but they're not telling Google that because their SEO header right here isn't really optimized for SEO. So how would I optimize this for SEO? You're going to apply this to your business. So let's go ahead and get started. I would maybe do the following. I would name this to be called Seaside Hotel affordable rooms and then I would name it off Turks and Caicos. So in this case Turks and Caicos. So what have we done? We've improved this title by giving the business name or company or the brand the keyword which is affordable rooms within the location which is Turks and Caicos. So again this is a lot better than what they had. They're now telling Google that they're a hotel out in Turks and Caicos that offers affordable rooms. Now, in regards to the keyword here, I really recommend you always have your business name first or the brand, the keyword or key phrase, and then always end it off with the location. So in my case, if I was a developer out in Toronto, Ontario, I would type in Alan Bajo. Hey, <laughs> um, a Wix, I'm a Wix SEO professional. And I'm in Toronto, Ontario. So you get the premise here. Business name or the brand, the keyword or key phrase, and then end it off with the location. Now this is really important because it's going to help Google better understand what you're about. Now the description. The description is super, super important because Google also picks up on the descriptions. So you'll, know that, you'll notice that almost every single web, website has a description. So make sure to, to do the following in your description. In the description, you want to have your business name, you want to have your keyword or key phrase, and then you want to have the location. So in this case, for a description, which I'm just going to randomly make up, Seaside Hotel offers affordable rooms to stay in within Turks and Caicos. You can kind of see the pre preset right here on the top to kind of show you how it's going to look as a preview on Google search. Make sure that you have a very great descriptive um, description, uh, but not too lengthy. It'll automatically tell you once you've hit 300 to 500 characters. Once you hit 500 characters, uh, it's not going to allow you to enter anymore. A good SEO description is roughly 350 characters long. So 500 is the maximum, but keep it within 350 generally is the rule of thumb. So regardless of what your business is, business name, keyword or key phrase, location. And that's the basic SEO settings here. Now, when it comes to your other pages, the best way to handle it would be the following. So under rooms and rates, this is a page. So because it's a page, we're going to go ahead and do the following. We're going to go ahead and call it rooms and rates, Seaside Hotel, Turks and Caicos. The page name, the business name, and the location. Likewise for activities. Activities, Seaside Hotel, Turks and Caicos, about us, Seaside Hotel, Turks and Caicos, and that's basically the premise of um, naming each one of your pages. Now remember that each one of your pages can have a custom URL slug. So it's going to be important to also understand that URL slugs will play an important part in ranking your business. So instead of maybe rooms and rates, you could put affordable rooms 
Turks, and Kaigos. You want to be competitive, but then you also don't want to be super lengthy. So I'll let you guys decide on what you want to do. Generally speaking, when it comes to um, setting up basic SEO, I try to simplify it as much as possible. So going back to the rooms and rates, instead of um, having a very spammy URL slug, which no one will remember, um, you'll want to go ahead and just make it simple. Rooms and rates. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how we can start being a little bit more aggressive in our SEO and really start adding more programmatic and more um, in-depth layering for our actual website. So let's go ahead and click on Advanced SEO. From here, you'll notice Structured Data Markup, Robo Tags, and Additional Tags. Let's go ahead and click on Additional Tags, and you'll notice everything from Chronicle all the way to OG. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and add Meta Tags. Meta Tags are going to be able to help put your website in a specific category. So let's go ahead and click on Add a New Tag, and this brand new little tag manager will appear here. I'm actually going to go ahead and paste this little meta tag um, snippet that you see here inside the description of this video so that you'll be able to simply replace keyword one, keyword two, keyword three with your keywords. So once you replace your keyword one, keyword two, keyword three, if you have more than three keywords, just put comma and then your other keyword, keyword four, comma, keyword five, comma, keyword six, whatever, however many keywords you have. So press apply. And you'll notice that a brand new widget will appear right here that says keywords. Fantastic. We've gone ahead and added a little bit more advanced functionalities to our Wix website. In this case, its keywords could have been hotel, affordable rooms in Turks and Caicos, uh, traveling to Turks and Caicos, whatever basically the premise is going to be for your business. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and discover something even better. Let's go ahead and see if we can add um, other cool factors such as a JSON LD structured data. This is really important because it's called a rich markup. So what exactly is a rich markup? Well, a rich markup is the following. Um, who is Alan Bajo? You'll notice that right here, Google automatically featured a little bit about who I am on Google search. So you'll notice about this featured snippet right here. And that's basically what the JSON LD structure is going to do. It's going to allow your website to, uh, it's going to allow Google to pick up little snippets of your website uh, when users are asking a question. Remember, users are asking a question on Google search. So try to do your best to always answer their search query. Another example is, is Alan Bajo good at SEO? You can see that basically Google, again, is picking up content thanks to the JSON LD structure data. So let's go ahead and start adding some structured data. Again, under Advanced SEO, under Structure Markup, we're going to go ahead and click this called Advanced SEO Markup, or just simply add a markup. But before I do that, I'm going to go back to my SEO basics. I'm going to grab my actual SEO title, and then I'm going to go back to my SEO settings. I'm going to click on Structured Data and add a new markup. From here, I'm going to name this Google Rich Results. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and hover over this little eye here, and it says, need a markup? Click here to generate one. So let's go ahead and click on this blue little link. So once you've clicked the blue link, it's going to take you to a website called technicalseo.com. From here, let's go ahead and click on this little drop down, and let's go ahead and add a markup for a website. Now, the only thing that we're going to have to fill out is the website name. Let's go ahead and paste what we copied, which was the title in our basic settings. From here, the URL could be alambajo.com. It's obviously going to be your website, so make sure you add your website. And then we're going to go ahead on the right-hand side and simply copy this whole entire text. So if it gives you an invalid URL, you'll want to go ahead and just do the following. Simply go to your website and copy the whole entire URL slug because sometimes it actually needs it to be www and https. So you'll notice we never got an error right here. And let's go ahead and copy the structure, right click and copy, and then go back into our editor and simply paste it into our snippet here. Simply press apply, and you'll notice that now we have a Google rich result. This is gonna allow Google to better understand your content and then recommend your content to the users. So let's go ahead and click on the three little dots and click on test on Google. 
From here, we'll be introduced uh, to a page called Does Your Page Support Rich Results? Click on Test Code, and then within a few moments, you'll notice that the code was completely accepted. Valid. That's right. Valid items are eligible for Google's rich results, meaning that very soon, Google's going to be able to pick up your content on Google's uh, rich results. So that's basically the premise here. We've gone ahead and added basic SEO by giving your page a title, adding a keyword, and adding a location, adding the description. We went under advanced SEO, added structured data, and then we went under additional tags and added keywords. Now, one of the things that we're going to have to do now is really help your business stand out. So let's do the following. Let us go back into our Wix SEO dashboard, and let's go ahead and click on settings here on the bottom left-hand corner. So from here, under basic information, let's click on basic information, and let's go ahead and give your business a name. Now, remember, we've gone ahead and named uh, within our business, within the basic SEO settings, Seaside Hotel Affordable Rooms Turks and Caicos. So let's go back to our dashboard and simply paste it here. Because this information right here is actually going to be submitted on Google search results. So it's important to also fill this out. Fill out the category that you belong to, whatever it might be, and give a small 150 page um, word description, 150 character description. And make sure you also upload the logo. From there, make sure that you actually put in the exact location of your business. So if you're a business that is very specific, then put in the location to the specific building. If you're more broader, then put in the actual um, broader location. But for anybody who has a brick and motor, you're going to want to put your exact business. From here, you want to go ahead and put your business phone number. And this basic information will start appearing within the JSON LD structured data here. And it will actually appear next time you open up your editor as local business. So What's really interesting is you'll see another one right here called local business after you've published and exited the editor and opened it back up. But remember, you want to go under business information and make sure this is completely filled out and matching what we actually have on the um, basic SEO settings. Now from here, what I'd like to do is go under marketing and SEO, click on SEO in general, and I want to go ahead and scroll down just a tad bit to a setting called SEO settings. From here, let's go ahead and click on go to SEO settings. And what we want to basically do is add a general image right here. Okay, so adding this image right here is going to allow an image to appear right next to your website. So if I'm looking for a moving company in London, Ontario, you'll notice that majority of the moving companies, well, at least on mobile anyways, you'll notice that there's images right beside the search results. So you, you'll, you'll notice it sometimes on specific projects, specific websites, but that's basically what it does. So um, going into the uh, um, adding the OG image, it's very, very important. Just add one that's uh, whatever your business is. You can add your logo if you like, it's totally fine. So what I'd like to do here is I want to go ahead and create something called an SEO pattern. So let's click on uh, main pages. Let's go under additional um, meta tags right here. And then let's go ahead and click on add a tag. And remember, we wanted to go ahead and add those tags that we added before, which I'm gonna go ahead and share with you. So under additional tags, the keywords right here, we're gonna click on edit. We're just gonna copy all this. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste it in our SEO basics. Press apply. And you'll notice that keywords now appear also under additional tags. Now, what's really interesting about SEO basics, um, sorry, about SEO settings tab right here, under SEO settings, under the main pages, is that when we add the little meta tags that we added here under additional tags, that applies to every single page. So this is cool because we can now add keywords that will apply to every single one of your pages. That saves us a lot of time from having to go to within every single page and specifically adding keywords for those pages. So go into your main pages, go under additional tags, click on it, and just continue adding keywords. Keyword seven, keyword eight, and you can add as many keywords as you like within this description, and that will automatically apply on your back end, which is really cool. So what have we learned with the basic SEO and high level SEO? 
Basic SEO starts with creating a great title, a great description, adding some meta tags in the back end, and then adding a structure markup so that they can properly understand your, your actual um, website. From here, to basically get started with submitting your project to Google, because at the end of your work and everything you've done, you want to go ahead and submit your website to Google search. So let's go ahead and click on marketing home on the left hand side, and then click on SEO one more time. Once that happens, what you'll want to do is that you'll notice a few things. It says site performance on Google search, connect to Google. You want to make sure to connect your website to Google by going through the SEO checklist, and then your checklist should appear right here. You'll want to go ahead and give your business um, a name, a title, a description, and pretty much everything in between. So go through this little module here, and then it's going to go ahead and cross-reference through your website, and then it's finally going to allow you to submit your project to Google search. If you are looking for an individual to really just help you with this at a high level, I can almost guarantee better results just because there's just so much in depth I can go in with you. Uh, you can reach out to me specifically and I can help you with your SEO one-on-one. -on -one. So without further delay, um, I hope you guys have had some great insights about Wix SEO. Basic SEO and advanced SEO isn't too tricky, but one of the real deciding factors is your content. Having really great content is going to help you stand out and then having structured data and having a really well structured website is also really going to help you out. So hope you guys have found a little bit of insights about this video and uh, if you have any questions I will try to answer them in the comments box below. Thanks guys.